What's up, everybody? Um, getting into this episode of GH. <sighs> Listen, ah, uh, Jax. I wanted to knock his fucking head off. Like, what is wrong with you? I knew he was up to some fishy shit when he came over there. I knew it. And the first sign he was up to some bullshit was him taking out his phone, putting it on the counter. Why would you do that, sir? That's a dead giveaway that you up to some nonsense. Because I have watched Jax over the years come to Sonny and Carly's house. That man ain't never took that phone out and put it down nowhere. This was the first time I've ever seen him do that. And I peeped that. I noticed as soon as he pulled it out. I said, Jax, what is, that's a dead giveaway that you up to some foolishness. You Who goes to somebody's house like that? Do like It's uncharacteristic. And I'm surprised Carly didn't notice that. Like, firsthand, she didn't notice. Like, if you're going to be in the mob, you have to be observant. One, you got to be observant. Two, you got to be able to read people. Read the room. You know what I'm saying? And the way that he was goading her, like when she was talking about keeping their daughter safe, and he was like, oh, how Sonny kept Morgan safe. When he said that, he said all of that because he knew it was going to piss her off, and that's what he wanted. He knew the way to get Carly talking was to goad her into an argument, get her off balance, get her emotions running high. He knew it, and she fed right into it. But she never, did, you know, she never told him any real information he kept asking her how do you plan on keeping jocelyn safe what are your plans like he was trying to get her to be you know specific be descriptive to you know incriminate herself and he asked her more than once because he was definitely trying to get her to snitch about blowing up cyrus's shipment he was trying to get her to snitch and carly wasn't falling for it and then she finally realized she looked she was like oh bitch you recording this conversation <laughs> She realized that shit, and I said, damn, Carly, it's about time. Um, You should have felt, felt something was off with his ass the moment he put that phone on that counter. When have you ever seen him do that? That's uncharacteristic. Anytime I see somebody do something uncharacteristic, I know you up to some shit. If I see you do something and I've been around you, like, these, this is even in real life, and I do this with people I know. If I see you do some shit, and I've known you for a long time, and I've been around you for a long time, and you do something uncharacteristic, I know something off. I know it right off the bat. As soon as you say something or do something, I know it. Something ain't right. Carly should have known as soon as he put that damn phone on that counter. As soon as you saw that shit on that counter, you should have shut that conversation the fuck down and told him to get out. That's what you should have did. He, Jack's ain't shit. I, let me tell you something. I've said this a million times. I'll say it again. I understand he's terrified for his daughter. But to go to these lengths is ridiculous on his part. Like, you're really trying to incriminate your ex-wife slash your baby mother. And what, what were you going to do? Send her to prison? You were really going to send her to prison? That's probably what his thought was. Oh, let me get her incriminate. Let me get her to incriminate herself. Send her to prison. Then Jocelyn safe all is well. No, dummy. All will not be well. Because at the end of the day, even if Carly does go to prison, your daughter is still fair game, stupid. If the Novaks take over Sonny's territory, any other mob for that matter, Jax is so ignorant. That's why I say he never sees the big damn picture to things. I understand he doesn't like the mob. I get it. But at the end of the day, Carly, the Corinthos organization, they don't run the entire mafia. They run territory. That's it. That's all they, the mob is going to be forever, in my opinion. I feel like the mob is just going to be forever. That shit been around for decades. It ain't going nowhere. The mafia is still around today. You still got the Gambino crime family and all that shit running wild. You still got them out here. It ain't going nowhere. It just evolves. That's all it does. After every decade or so and new things start happening, they evolve. They don't go away. It's still organized crime. That's how dumb Jax is. I understand you want to keep your daughter safe, but putting your, your ex-wife in prison is not the way to go, dumb dumb. It's not the way to go, sir. That was stupid on your part. I understand you're scared, but and like I said before, Jocelyn is moving out of Sonny's house anyway. She's moving into a dorm, so she's not going to be staying there. You know what I'm saying? So that makes her kind of less of a target. At least she'll be on campus with campus security, as good as that is, I guess. But um, I'm pretty sure, you know, Carly's still going to have security on her, too, even at, at college. You know what I'm saying? You got campus security, you got a bunch of people around, and they don't just let anybody into the dorms and all that stuff. So she's going to be as safe as safe can be. 
his his move that he made on Carly was so stupid. I was like, what, what what purpose did that serve you? And I'm glad Carly figured that shit out quickly. She figured it out as quick as I would hope she would have. I would have wanted her to figure it out before he goaded her. But um, I'm glad she, you know, she got to it. She grabbed that phone. I said, good. You need to put his ass in his place because Jack's starting to get on my damn nerves now. He's doing too much. So anyway, moving on from that. Dante and Sam. Listen, first of all, let me say this. The Metro Court pool area looks so freaking nice at night. I mean, it looks beautiful during the day, but at night, it really, I like it. It's really nice. They need to get some more tiki torches up there too, though, and make it even better. Um, You know, I love me a good tiki torch in the summertime. I love it. And them little tiki torches, you put them in the backyard and shit, light them bitches up, get you some mood music, get the grill popping at night. Oh, that shit is such a vibe. Get you some wine. Let me tell y'all what y'all need to drink. Some sweet bitch wine. It's called sweet bitch wine. It's the best wine. Get y'all some of that. Get a little ambiance going. Man, it's such a vibe. You would just be in heaven and peace. I'm telling you. It's such a it's such a peace of mind feeling. Um, it's it's very good. Um, so anyway, like I said before, I'm very on the fence about Dante and Sam hooking up, being a couple and whatnot, because that's just it's just too much. Like, she done fucked his daddy. She fucked his uncle. That's just too much. She done had enough of the Corinthos Lansing dick. It's like, that's that's just too much. That's three generations of, of peen you done had, okay? I mean, she hasn't had Dante's yet, but that, I mean, it's inevitable. But that's just too much. Like, you done had sex with his uncle. You slept with his daddy. You had a baby by his daddy. Rest in peace, you know, baby Lila. Um, That's just too much. Plus, on top of that, y'all share siblings, ill like no it's just too much like that is way too much so if dante and sam were to get married christina be like oh this is uh dante my brother slash brother-in-law how does that shit sound come on now that's, that's just then on top of that rocco would be her nephew slash nephew-in-law two nephews nephew-in-law biological nephew go figure that's just too much it's too much but i do like their their chemistry though and i did like the little date night that they had the shit was kind of funny it was awkward at first after they got done talking about the kids and shit but it was funny though because dante was like are we on a date she was like no i just she was like shit i i you know i have male friends he was like i got female friends i freaking love the shade that dante threw at jason he didn't mention jason but i love the shade because he basically told Sam, like, I'm not your type because I'm not a brood. He was like, I'm not a brood. I can cook and I have a sense of humor. I was dying laughing because I said, if that ain't shade, I don't know what is. And I was here for that shit. I was here for it because it was true. I have never heard of Jason Morgan cooking a day in his life. I don't think he can. Do he? I've never heard of Jason cooking. Um... And he definitely ain't got no sense of humor. I have seen him smile here and there, but that man ain't got no sense of humor. <laughs> that man do not know. Listen, you could slap that man in the face with a good joke. He probably still wouldn't laugh. Um, But I like their little date night. Then, you know, Dante kept rambling. So Sam ended up kissing him to shut him up. I said, I seen a little tongue. I said, let me look a little closer. I think I seen a little tongue slip up in there. Y'all getting a little nasty now. I don't know what it is about tongue kissing. I would have to know you. Hey, my thing about tongue kissing, like, I'm not tongue kissing with shit unless I've known you for a while and I know your hygiene, then maybe. <laughs> I ain't with all that swapping spit like that. Uh, nope. Can't, not with this corona out here, especially not now. <laughs> um... But Sam must have been feeling that date because the first phone call she got, she did not answer that phone at all. So that's how you know you you having a good date because dating nowadays, like people just be on a phone. That's how you know it's not really a good time if somebody's on their phone too much and they're not paying attention. But she didn't even answer that phone. So then when Dante went to go get them some drinks, she gets another phone call. She answered the phone. It's that damn Drew. I said, oh, damn. He was basically begging her for help. I was like, oh, shit. Um, I'm kind of happy that they're bringing Drew back. You know what I mean? It's not like I didn't like the Drew character. I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad, you know, it's good that they're bringing him back. Um, I have to see 
the chemistry with Cameron and the rest of the cast. I have to see it. I have to see who he... I got to get a feel for it. You know what I mean? I can't get overly excited right now because I got to get a feel and see, you know, because Billy Miller, he had chemistry with a lot of them. So I got to see how Cameron does. You know what I mean? Like, we got to see that chemistry with him. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. Spencer party done went out of control. It went left real quick. <laughs> that party went wild real fucking quick. Um, like I said before, I agree that, you know, I love the fact that Spencer did at least have a, you know, a bracelet or something and a bodyguard, a security to make sure that nobody comes into the house. I thought that was smart because I wouldn't want no random friends, even though they, they're his friends from Europe. I wouldn't want them all up in my house either. I'm just saying, um, I, I have to like be real comfortable with you. Like we gotta be besties for you to be, you know, traipsing around my home. Like, I'm just saying, I don't just have randoms all up in my house. That's just not happening. Um, Trina, Cameron, and Jocelyn were not feeling his European friends. They were not feeling them because they were all very snobbish. I'm like, are you surprised? He did warn y'all about that, though. He did tell y'all that they were snobs, so get used to it. Um, so anyway, some shit started to go down. Like, lights started to go off. It was just insane. Like, Cameron thought that, you know, Spencer was playing some little practical joke on all of them or whatever. Cameron, Spencer was looking like, bitch, I ain't playing with y'all. This for real. <laughs> he said, I did not do this shit. Like, the lights are going off. Spencer done got a damn phone call from somebody sounding like Ryan talking about something that ends tonight. Then some sign comes down that says it ends tonight. Like, it was a whole bunch of crazy shit. Trina was getting, everybody was panicking. So they started to try to call 911. They couldn't get no service. So now they go out to the turret or whatever, to the, um, whatever you call it. Um, and some dude in a mask comes out behind them with a knife. I said, damn, Nicholas, I hope this is you. Like, right, I'm just saying. I definitely think this is Nicholas. I think this was his plan. Because remember, he said that he had to make sure that Spencer got a taste of his own medicine. So now he's stalking Spencer. Um, so this, I believe, is definitely Nicholas. I was here for it, though. And it's not even Halloween time, but this felt like some shit you would do on Halloween. I was here for it. I said, okay, Nicholas. You probably gonna mess up your relationship with your son even further, but I'm here for this. I was like, I'm, I'm here for it. Um, so anyway, Ava was talking with Kevin or whatever about Ryan and stuff like that and about Spencer. Kevin was assuring her that Ryan is definitely not in the physical position to you know stalk anyone and you know he was waffling at first about whether spencer could be the stalker and stuff like that but i'm like kevin you know damn well he could be a stalker and you know kevin admitted he was like you know spencer has gotten away with a lot over the years and never really had any consequences for anything so it's possible that he could be the stalker i said it's very possible because he would think that even if he did this he probably wouldn't you know he would get away with it like he's always done um, so of course, Ava had to, you know, quickly tell Kevin and Laura about Nicholas not really being in Dubai and that, you know, what's going down or whatever, that he suspected Spencer of being the stalker and whatnot. Um, and they felt like it was, all of this was going to end in disaster, which it might, it just might. So, of course, you know, Kevin and uh, Laura are on their way to Windermere to set this shit straight and get this sorted out. But what was baffling to me was because you had some little orderly at the hospital and he's sitting there eavesdropping on Kevin and um, Ava in their conversation. And then on top of that, when Ava was still at the hospital, somebody was watching Ava. I was like, my thing is, what if Ryan is really faking all of this shit? Like, what if he really can you know slip in and out of that place or whatever because it's very low security you know what i'm saying it's not some big maximum security facility like he was at before you know this is very low security so it's a big chance that he could have manipulated somebody to help him or he could be in and out of there without anybody knowing about it it's very you know very ryan like let's just say that um 
on top of that, you know, she was trying to call and arrange a boat and stuff. Like, somebody's watching her. Somebody's doing this shit. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, is Spencer really the stalker? Or is him and Ryan, like, really working it? Like, what the hell is going on? Because somebody's still watching her. So, it's this is getting insane right now. And I'm intrigued by this shit. I like it. Um... I did love that conversation that Laura had with Elizabeth. Um, basically, I love that Elizabeth has somebody because I, I kind of feel bad for Elizabeth. She doesn't have any real like family, like in terms of parents. Like Laura was asking her, did she talk to her dad about Naomi Dreyfus being killed and stuff like that? And Liz didn't even really know where her father was. All she kind of knew was that he was somewhere in Africa. She didn't know exactly where in Africa, but she just knew that's where he was. And I feel like that's sad. You know, that's very sad. You know, like Liz really does not have any parents. I'm like, her kids doesn't, I'm pretty sure her kids don't have a relationship with their grandparents. Their grandparents like have never been to their birth, birthday parties, nothing. And I think that's sad. You know, the only person that she had was her, you know, grandmother and stuff, Audrey. Um, and, of course, the Spencer family, Laura and stuff like that. That's the only real family she's ever really had. You know, and plus Epiphany and her colleagues and stuff. So I feel bad for her. You know, her parents really ain't shit. Jeff Weber ain't shit. That's a deadbeat if I've ever seen one. <laughs> He's not shit. Like, seriously, you don't call your daughter. You don't check in with her. You know, her husband died. Her parents were radio silent on that. I was like, wow. How do you go through life just being a deadbeat to your own child, to a child that you brought into the world? I don't understand that shit. And then you got grandkids that you don't even know. Like, that's pathetic. That's that's sad as all outdoors. Just, just sad as shit. I feel bad for Liz, but I'm glad, you know, Liz has done a lot of things in her life that are not good. But I will say this about her. She finds a way to smile. I will give Liz her props for that. She does not buckle. Like, she's still there for her kids. She still puts on a smile. She still goes to work every day. You know, she pays her bills. Like, and I used to can't stand. I used to be able to not like Liz for shit. But I, I do respect that about her. You know what I'm saying? But I know it eats her up inside, though, about her parents. I'm pretty sure it has to. It's like, you can't just walk around all smiles every day, you know, but we don't know how she feel really inside. You know what I mean? I just find it fucked up. Like, her parents ain't shit. But um, anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about it. And I'll see you all later. Have a great day. Peace.